Welcome to The Real Board Loft. I'm Trip Foreman. Today we have Adam Warden with us from AJW Surfboards. Adam, thanks for joining us, man. We're stoked to have you Thank here you, in Cape Hatteras. Hey, we're gonna talk boards with Adam while we got him here, and there's no, we gotta start with this one. We gotta start with the OG PL, the AJW original potato launcher, because this is the board that was owning a lot of lighthouse waves uh, this past swell from Hurricane Ian. Adam, talk to us about uh, like this board, how long it's been around and like kind of where the whole design came from. Okay, so originally, and we've been making this board, I think it's been about 11 or maybe even 12 years now with a good friend of mine, Rob Brown, down in Wilmington, North Carolina. He was going to Indonesia, he was going to G-Land for a while. The original concept was when everybody started really pushing, riding shorter, wider noses. In, uh, in bigger barrels. And at the time, everything was still pretty rockered out and bananaed out. And I just hand shaped a random board we did, mm -hmm. tried to do a wider nose, actually didn't have a lot of experience doing quad fins at all. And we pretty much winged it. And the, the original first one we did, we actually glassed the bottom with double glass, did a special different glassing on the deck. Mm -hmm. And the thing was basically bulletproof. Uh, however, for the quad placement, I kind of just made up wing to, wing to fin placement that we thought. And over the last following five years, we mm -hmm. tried to make a lot of different ones with different fin placements, and none of them worked as good and as, the as the first one. And right. then Rob Brown oh, it was great. He's a great barrel rider already. So I wasn't, you know, wasn't too shocked when he said, oh, look at this. 10 second barrel I got. He ended up ditching that board. The story behind was he went to Puerto Rico after Indonesia, left it with Josie Graves, yep. a, another mutual friend. And Josie's way bigger. Josie ended up breaking a board on a trip, took it, calls me up and says, man, I got one of the best barrels I've gotten all year on this board. Still ticking, still going strong. Rob found out, he got jealous, took the board back, took it to Hawaii for a season, Got barreled at small pipeline on it, a bunch of different places. Came back, somebody else borrowed the same board. I think he surfed Lighthouse on it. Yeah. And then he took it to Chopu and it officially died like two or three years later at like a set wave at Chopu. And I was like, I can't believe that board lasted that long. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. So that was the, meanwhile, I had tried shaping maybe another dozen so of them mm -hmm. and not as good a success. And I tried it as a thruster because everybody was really into thrusters or everyone was a little hesitant on quads at the time mm -hmm. and it never worked. The feedback was as good on the thruster. So then I started playing with all sorts of different fin placements and never as much success. So then Rob eventually got the broken half tail gave it back to me <laughs> years later. It's like, screw it, let's just copy this thing as best we could, took all these measurements, tried gluing it back together to get the rocker right, uh -huh. and reproduced a couple of those. And then um, we had made, for a couple other friends, multiple similar stories. Somebody borrowed one and took it to Skeleton Bay, said they got the best barrel of their life on it. And consistently over the last 10, 12 years, the regular story I get with this board is I got the best barrel of my life. They don't say the board That's was great. great. That's good feedback if they you're going to have short and sweet. They don't say they, oh my gosh, this is, this is the board. Right. But I've consistently had a lot of customers and that was kind of that one. So when, when you told me we wanted to do a board for Brett, I was like, oh, it's a no brainer. Let's That's make the one. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So tell us about, so a short, you know, shorter than, a, you know, like rather than having it be stretched out, like shortening it up so it's fitting in the barrel and like easier maneuver in the tube? So the mistake on this is, and nowadays a lot of other brands, um, not every brand basically out there has a tube riding, a little fuller nose design, obviously. And the mistake is this actually doesn't have a ton of meat packed into it. Okay. So when you do, you can ride them smaller, but you have to order them a lot thicker. Yep. And we'll have thickness here throughout but we pinch it down here all the way through to the back there at the rail we try to keep it a little bit smaller so it doesn't necessarily this is not a step up a lot of people think oh this is a six four a, you know packed into a smaller board okay. yep. it's not necessarily that i okay. almost recommend if you really want it for a really hollow wave ride at your regular shortboard length okay go way thicker in the middle and a hair a little bit wider. Um, specifically as a quad, 
I can I can show you. Sure, this too. sure. Maybe you can see. Oh, there's my dog. What's up, Nori? Nori knows what's up. So the tail rocker here specifically. You think he'll let me ride him? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Try. Dude, get on like a like a like a motorcycle. Easy. <laughs> so your typical shortboard or even step up boards, the rocker tends to bend somewhere in front. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one, the bend is actually carried farther back. When the bend is farther back, it's kind of the release point of it where it's focused on releasing on the, the quad fins specifically. So it does tend to release better and ride better as a quad. Now, a lot of people are hesitant with or have had good or bad success with quads. Our fin placement on this one is designed to feel more like a thruster and you don't even think twice on it. That's the concept. Okay. If you put your fins in backwards, it does not work that as good. So that's, that's what happened to Brett, yeah? That's what, so Brett put his rear fins angled inward and these ones go on this way. So it was actually, that fin was most likely fighting this one or vice versa. So, yeah. not a, so basically not a step up. Not a step up. You're riding at the same length as your like normal short part. So roughly a little bit shorter, a little maybe bit shorter. one to two inches short. It really depends on what size wave range. Yep. So a lot of people think this is for double overhead plus. Mm -hmm. I'd say focus more on really hollow head high to one foot overhead. Okay. However, for those guys like Rob Brown or Brett Barley, who they're not going to ride a step up board, they're going to push this to the limits. Yeah. It has been handled in those size ranges on small boards. Um, but they don't necessarily paddle like a 6.4. So it's not necessarily gonna be a, hey, you can ride a 5.8 and pumping Pasquales. Yeah, no, yeah. Not the case. What about like we had uh, those sessions a, a few years ago, like up at like ramp blank blank, and like there were some outside bars and Cam Richards was on one of these things, right? And he snagged some like mega waves. So he where were, like what size was that, you think? So he was also riding, that's kind of where we learned that we could go a little longer, a little okay. more length. And we were making him a 5'11", which he typically ride a 5'10 shortboard. So it was, okay. it was more so it was going the other up. direction. Okay. He also had some success in some really larger days at Chopu. Okay. Which we were all shocked on and he didn't necessarily choose to ride that originally. Mm -hmm. He had some bigger boards that actually snapped, and so he was forced to ride the smaller one, but it, it handled. Once you get over, the goal is to kind of get over the bubble. Uh -huh. Once you're down into the wave, it's gonna handle, and once you're in the tube, the rail rocker will create a little bit of a lift up into the tube, so you yep. shouldn't have to pump it. You can just stand there, it's gonna lift up, it's gonna make you uh, go really fast. But getting into the wave and getting over that ledge, you know, you just got to be able to muscle up and get it, do it. It does ride good at smaller dimensions. You just, you're going to want to have, uh, you're going to have to go a little later. Okay. So the board can handle any size wave. I'd even say this rail line and rocker, you could even, if you had to tow into a wave, it would, once you're in the face, it should work. But because there's only but so much hidden meat, uh -huh. it's not necessarily a big step up. It's more of like, the ideal waves to me is a foot overhead, slabby, really hollow tubes. Okay. And it does still have some good open face cars as a quad. Yeah, so that, I, was, the, that was the next thing I was gonna ask you is, you know, a lot of times the boards for those conditions are pretty directional. They're pretty like locked in and they're mm -hmm. not really good turning. Mm -hmm. Boards, like if you do get some open face after the barrel, how does this thing feel like on, on those turns? So on open face turns, this will carve really good uh -huh. as, as a quad. As a thruster, it will then feel stiffer. So if here's another suggestion. If you have to ride yours in larger waves than you feel comfortable, maybe then as a thruster, it's going to feel stiffer and give you more hold. Okay. But on your turns, it's going to be a little more because it does go wide all the way here to narrow uh -huh. versus wide up here. So it wants to be ridden as a quad is what I always try to suggest to people. We talked about like the top of the wave range. What's the bottom of the wave range on this board? It's not really a groveler. You can ride it in smaller waves. Uh -huh. I would su I would suggest, you know, chest high to a foot overhead would be ideal. Okay, like chest high and punchy. I mean, you saw Brett riding it at Lighthouse this yeah. last week in some average waves. Right, right. You know, you can you can surf it like a shortboard. It's 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 a 
I don't want to call it a full performance board, but it's it's got some performance okay. features. You're talking about mostly quads on this board. Do you have any like fin, fins you recommend, like templates you recommend in futures and FCS? So so it was interesting when I had talked to Brett when he rode his because he said he'd never ridden a quad in 10 years, and I was pretty baffled by that. Um, so he was asking what fins to use, and my first suggestion was ride his regular or anybody. Ride your regular shortboard fins in the front. Okay. And then you're you have some familiarity there. Yeah. So for future fins, I would recommend ride whatever fins you typically ride in the front as your regular shortboard fins. And then I would suggest the either the the F6 or whatever medium uh, rear quads you're gonna have that they offer with a lot of their range. Same with FCS. My biggest suggestion would be just going medium to larger rears is what you're looking for because you want that drive that you would that you would expect to get with a thruster. So not small rears. Make now, sure it's at least medium. Some people have ridden small fins as as I, I call it the, the the big wave small fin theory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which the number one concept is um, strictly no drag. You want to go yep. as fast as possible and get down the wave. And that uh, that works great for big boards. If you're riding a 10 foot gun you have this big, heavy, clunky board, and you got to gun and run down the line. Mm -hmm. fin big fins are going to slow you down and ca exactly, catch you. Yeah. But this style of board is not a boaty giant board, so you're going to have to take off under the wave anyways, air drop into it, and then when you get to the bottom, you really want to push off. You want to be able to push off of something you, and get some push back. You want some acceleration, yeah. so that's why I say go with the medium to large in the back. All right, awesome. Well, Adam, thank you for uh, for joining us and giving us some insight on the uh, original potato launcher, the Legend. Um, if anybody out there has any questions about the AJW OGPL or would like to place an order for one, you can always call us at the shop, 252-987-6000, yeah. or look us up online, realwatersports.com forward slash surfing. Thanks for tuning in.